Hey there toy collector friends and Doctor Who fans alike. Welcome back to the channel. I'm the time traveling toy collector and this is something a little bit different. Um, as you may be aware from some of my earlier videos, um, one of the reasons I became really interested in toy collecting relatively recently, just sort of over a lockdown period, uh, whilst going through some of the belongings that I had long since thought lost um, when clearing out my, uh, my mum's place, uh, I found a range of things that I had managed to, or my mum had managed to keep hold of, that I thought was, were long, long lost to time. And here we have um, a prime example of that. And this is the Dapple um, TARDIS police box and the Dapple uh, Seventh Doctor uh, action figure. Now, one of the things that really fascinates me about toys and the evolution of toys is how the engineering uh, and the quality that is invested in toys has changed so significantly over the last few years. And in one of those particular aspects, um, I have to cite the Doctor Who franchise. I'm very, very aware that there was a massive insurgence of um, cash uh, into the 2005 reboot of the series. Um, and along with that came some merchandise. But in that first first year that first wave of, of Doctor Who merchandise it was a little bit hit and miss but my goodness me it was so far superior to anything we'd had before and indeed the Dapple range of figures really came out uh, towards the back end of Sylvester McCoy the seventh Doctor um, his his run um, from um, I think it was 87 to 89 inclusive not including the TV movie uh, geeks out there who are thinking the same as I um, but this is kind of what we had. Now, the figure itself, let's look at this first. It did come with the umbrella, which I do have, but I keep it safe so that I don't lose it because I know how easily lost these things are. But I still have it. It has very limited uh, posability, but nevertheless, it has elbows and knees and uh, hips and neck. Um, a jaunty expression, if we want to call it a jaunty expression. Uh, dust because it's a very old figure um, but nevertheless uh, it's it's recognizably uh, the seventh doctor as he sort of first appeared albeit with a peculiar paint job uh, of the jacket uh, and the scarf and that rather fabulous slash hideous uh, v-neck tank top that he wore uh, of which it goes without saying I do have one uh, that I wear on uh, special occasions we won't talk about that um but the figure in and of itself not particularly spectacular uh, the tar the, the police box the tardis um this was something really really great prior to this there'd been the dennis fisher one uh that was predominantly cardboard and plastic um with a rotating light feature and some buttons that made the figures inside disappear which I've never really understood the, the, the science behind it. It has two-way opening doors, um, which is, you know, novel. Actually, one-way opening door, uh, two-way opening door. Um, and inside it has the a replicant, replication of the TARDIS interior roundels, and that's because you can actually dismantle this uh, and it can create a diorama all of its own, which you can then use in conjunction with the... Um, with the, the console, the electronic console that came with the Dapple range that was um, incorrect because it didn't have the right number of size. It wasn't hexagonal, it was pentagonal, if I remember rightly. Um, and the light up and sound features were not particularly brilliant, but they were there. So, you know, that was something to be very mindful of. Um, again, the Dennis, the Dennis, the Dennis, um, Dennis Fisher model uh, is one of my holy grail toys. Occasionally they come up on eBay, but they're so expensive. And that's when they're not damaged. You do get some that are damaged um, and they, they're going for upwards of um, 90, 100, 120 quid damaged. Um, and uh, if I'm gonna spend that kind of money, I don't want it damaged. I want one that actually is in good condition. Um, but that's just me being, being a nuisance and terribly, terribly picky. Um, but I just thought was, because we have, um, for those who are unaware, we have um, what is looking likely to be the 13th Doctor's penultimate regular appearance in the role um, coming up this weekend. Um, it's Legend of the Sea Devils. So I thought it'd be quite nice to do a sort of Doctor Who themed 
toy examination. I'm not going to go through all the, rain, the reams of uh, available action figures because that would be crazy. Um, but I just wanted to do, based on uh, some of you will also be aware from the recent uh, toy shopping toy haul um, videos that I did after being at Wales Comic Con, uh, I was able to pick up a modern Seventh Doctor figure loose. Um, and I like them loose because that way somebody's already taken the responsibility of opening it and then it's not on me. But I just wanted to sort of show that this was, for us, uh, back in the 80s, this was the cutting edge Doctor Who figures. Um, I've, I'll, I'll just bring this in just to show you for a comparison, but I'm not really going to do anything with this today. We also got these little pull back and go Daleks um, that you could get. And to be honest, I didn't really heavily invest in this range. Um, it was coming out at a point when I was ceasing to be uh, into toys, but I had to get these because as someone who'd grown up watching Doctor Who and lamenting the fact that I never had the TARDIS, um, this this was something I had to pick up uh, and pick it up, I did. And I was so pleased to have it. Uh, prior to this, when I was a child playing, I had the, um, I think it was an Easter egg. Uh, in my head, it was an Easter egg uh, tin, but I, that could be a forced memory. It could be some sort of chocolates for, for Christmas, but I'm sure, it was like a Christmas or Easter type of thing. And it had um, Tom Baker on the front. And it was just a metal tin with a lift-off lid and the sweets on the inside. And they then re-released it a little while afterwards with Peter Davison on the front um, in the open doorway, as it were. And uh, I've still got that somewhere as well. Um, but uh, yeah, it really fascinated me that um, looking back that that is what I used to to when I was playing in inverted commas Doctor Who uh, as a child because I didn't have anything else so I was absolutely using that tin as my toy TARDIS and I actually think that I was using some of the Star Trek motion figure motion uh, motion picture action figures um, as additional incarnations of the Doctor because I didn't have any Doctor Who action figures because other than some previous Dennis Fisher ones as mentioned um, I, they didn't exist. So this was um, the first incarnation for me of Doctor Who figures. Although I did have, I tell you, I did have the Dennis Fisher um, talking Dalek, and I did have the Dennis Fisher uh, pull back and go K9, which I also still do have, but he's in a terrible state of disrepair, um, and we won't talk about that because it just make me sad. But I really wanted to then to sort of put these into context alongside their. 21st century counterpart, which isn't going to work quite the way I wanted to do it. So I'm going to take Sylvester out for a second and replace him with his equivalent TARDIS. Um, so we can already see, um, actually I will bring him back in for a scaling perspective, that this kind of scales okay, but it, you know, it's not, this is not a heavy investment in a, in a, in a, <laughs> in, in an action figure mold. Um, as uh, we would expect. Um, and I know there's lots of people who've done uh, the, the, the character options, TARDIS, police box, moulds. So I'm not looking to do that. This isn't a review of character options toys. Um, it's just really that thing that fascinates me in terms of, you know, this is, this is based on the exact same prop. Um, but we can see now just how much attention to detail uh, down to the painting, everything else, the opening doors. Uh, although the interior of this TARDIS still does appeal to me tremendously because it does let you open it up and do um, occasional toy photography type stuff. For example, with some of the uh, Hero Collector consoles, you could use it for that. But uh, it's a world apart. I mean, it's absolutely a world apart um, with its opening doors. You can also open the, uh, this is right now, or fail to be able to do it, I'm sure. You can, uh, nice to put there we go. you can open up that and find that there's a little telephone inside. Um, and I'm not sure they've ever used that feature uh, during the Seventh Doctor's run. Although um, that may be not true. They may have done so in Delta and the Bannermen, which is maybe really geeking out. Um, but I may have made, that might be slightly false memory or a, a variation on the memory that I have. But you can see straight away um, one towers directly over the other. One looks solid and sturdy. The other is a little plastic box held together with um, a couple of tabs and goodwill uh, before it opens up into the TARDIS uh, diorama interior. 
Um, so next to that, I'm going to bring in, some of you have seen it already, the, um, the cream jacket 7th Doctor figure that I got at the um, Comic Con. Uh, again, he's available with and without hat. This is the one without the hat. Um, again, I also have the umbrella for this, which I've just put down. Now, of course, I can't see where I've put it, um, but never mind. Um, here they are side by side. Again, bear in mind, the exact same figure. Now, I'm not criticising column A in favour of column B. I'm just demonstrating that this is the kind of technological forward motion. I mean, even down to the pockets. So they did their best to give him the bulging pockets. Uh, and here we see them translated quite well across the two different figures. Um, bit lazy painting on the legs, but the technology probably wasn't there to, to achieve something better. So we've got a much more realistic representation here and of course we pay the difference we absolutely pay the difference but uh, in all honesty I kind of I do kind of like the the sort of kitsch um, retro feel of this because it is you know a kitsch retro feel feeling figure I'm just pop them in front of their respective TARDISes uh, and you can see a little more just how non-scaly they actually are um, but yeah I, I really I really love the nostalgic element that I get from this little box set. <coughs> Excuse me, that's me coughing with excitement. Um, but this one obviously clearly wins out. It clearly wins out because the level of detailing, the level of um, play features overall outweighs it. You do have an electronic feature in here with the lights and sounds. Some of the other TARDISes have um, an interior diorama that gives the impression of it being bigger on the inside, particularly in the ninth and 10th, and I think the 11th Doctor Tardises had that, then they kind of gave up doing it because it was a bit more too, it was a bit too costly for them, I think, character options, so they stopped. Um, mercifully, there's a lot of people online who will do those sort of things for you, um, and you can just print them off and insert them, so that's marvellous. Um, but I just wanted to share this because I know we've got that new um, special episode of Doctor Who coming up prior to the centenary of the uh, BBC itself, where we'll see the 13th Doctor presumably regenerate into the 14th. We don't know yet. Um, so I wanted to do something a little different just to sort of celebrate um, the evolution of toys from oh, column A into column B. And I think this really is one of the prime examples. Other prime examples would be Star Wars figures as well and Star Wars toys. And I may do one of those in the future if you find this sort of thing of interest. If you do, um, hit the like button by all means and leave a comment in the uh, comment section below. Uh, whilst you're doing that, you could also subscribe to the channel because you never know what's going to pop up next. It could be more Doctor Who. Um, it could be Star Trek, it could be Star Wars, it could be Transformers, it could be Marvel, it could be Battlestar Galactica, it could be anything really. Um, so yeah, give that give that a go. Um, but I do I do love to see that sort of evolution and but still the love that was there the first time around in the developing and the creation of these toys. And again, not to be mean about what's come later, but these were built to be played with. You know, they've become collector's pieces now. They have, there's no denying it. But they were built to be played with and played with they were. Now we have these figures uh, and this, this collection and range. So we've got TARDISes, you've got Doctors, you've got a whole host of monsters uh, and companions and so on and so forth. Um, it's really become the, the, the million pound industry that in our imaginations it, would always, it always was. Um, but they are now, because they're so detailed, and so many of those of us who can probably afford to get them, unlike the children that they may have been aimed at initially, um, we have such uh, love for them that they are, they're sort of priced, they start to be moved, the price point starts to move slightly beyond that of children and, and playable toys, and it becomes slightly more collecty and collectible. Um, which I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, there was a bit of a debate, and I alluded to this in the previous video, um, that I got slightly caught up in at, a, at the, the Comic Con. A uh, good natured debate, um, but then I saw a slightly less good natured debate on everyone's favourite platform, Twitter, um, where people were sort of calling toy collectors, in particular, funnily enough, um, actually Transformers toy collectors and in another thread, Doctor Who toy collectors out for the money they paid to collect toys because 
they're only toys and they should be played with as toys and they're not there to last forever. Which of course, you know, very few things are. But I tend to think that whilst yes, children should get love and pleasure out of these things, love and pleasure isn't exclusively the purview of children. And I think that we're, in, that you know, hardworking adults who've uh, got either a strong sense of nostalgia or connection or something to um, their childhood or they something that they always wanted to have. You know what, if, if you can afford it, um, and you can you want to display it and it gives you pleasure or it gives you nostalgia or it connects you to times that have passed or people that have passed um, then you know if that's what you want that's what you can have as long as you're not hurting anybody or, or putting yourself or others at risk um, either in terms of financially or in any other way in pursuing that then you know it's 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 your hard-earned cash it's your right to do with it pretty much pretty much um, as you wish. So that tends to be my view, but again, it's a debate I'll happily have at some other point. But yeah, so I'll wrap this up now because I appreciate you've spent 15 minutes of your day with me and I'm really grateful. So um, here is the Seventh Doctor from the 80s and the 80s Seventh Doctor um, from the uh, 21st century coming together just to A, celebrate the ongoing legacy of Doctor Who along with the legacy of the Sea Devils uh, broadcasting shortly. Um, but also the legacy of toys and their evolution over time. I've been the time travelling toy collector, literally. Um, you've been a fantastic audience. Thank you very much for sticking around. Do take care of yourselves, and I do very much hope to see you in a future video. Um, until then, try not to get exterminated. Bye for now.